Hi Year 2 and welcome to Friday's art lesson. I hope you had a lovely day yesterday for World Book Day. I really enjoyed myself so I hope you did too. Um, today we are going to be thinking a little bit more about books and we're going to be redesigning one of the front covers for a Roald Dahl book. So we're going to start off by looking at the examples that he's currently got. There's lots of different ones, they've changed loads over the years. Then we're going to practice using some different fonts, um, so doing our writing in different styles. Then we're going to think about some different characters that might be on the front cover. And then we're going to design our very own front cover for a Roll Doll book. These are all the things you're going to need, so you might need to pause me to go and get those bits and bobs. Okie dokie, right, let me just move myself out of the way so we can all see. There we go. Okay, so, oh, <laughs> so, um, Today, we're going to be redesigning the front cover of some of our favourite Roald Dahl books, and we're going to be drawing the characters in Quentin Blake's style. So on Tuesday, we had a look at how the front covers of the books have changed and how Quentin Blake changed them. And we're going to be doing another change of them today. So this one is George's Marvellous Medicine. And I'm sure lots of you have read this one at home. So the one with the red background is the oldest version of it. So it's got a big box and we can see George in there making his marvellous medicine. Um, the text is quite the same for all of it, not too many colours used. And then we move on to the middle one, which is a purple background with the yellow writing. They've used different texts and they've also got Grandma Cranky um, pushing her head through the top of the George's marvellous medicine part. And then there's, there's George at the bottom as well. Now, the most recent version is the light blue one and it's got a um, George's Marvellous Medicine done on, written on it still, but we've changed it slightly to a picture of it just being George um, making the medicine. So, oops, there we go. So these are the current book covers for Matilda, with the light pink one being the oldest and running it, its way through to the most recent one. So in Matilda, the two the two on the left hand side of the screen um they've actually got the same picture of Matilda okay and the same picture of Mrs Trunchbull in there whereas the most recent one um it looks as though Quentin Blake has slightly changed Matilda um she's for example her dress is a different color and her face looks slightly different okay so I wonder if he's changed her slightly as the years have gone on so there's lots of similarities in that one. They've used similar text in the light pink and the middle one, but then um, there's also different colours used and there's a background in the other one too, where we can see it looks like it's Bruce Bogtrotter and he's eating the big cake. I love that part. Um, but in the most recent up-to-date one, it's just Matilda and she sat on a box with books all around her. Okay, uh, these are all the covers for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So the light blue one is the oldest one where we can see Willy Wonka and Charlie with his golden ticket. And then in the middle, we can actually see a picture of the factory, which is really cool. I really like that one where it's got the factory in there as well. It looks very magical. And again, we can see Willy Wonka and Charlie as well. And then the last one, the most recent up-to-date one, the light yellow background is um, Willy Wonka and Charlie. Okay, he's eating a bit of chocolate this time but there's also that purple smoke behind all of the letters, um, which tells us who the author is, what the title is, and who it's illustrated by. Now, these are the one for the twits. So the one with the green background um, is the oldest one. And then it's the, there's a different shade of green is the middle one. And then the another different shade of green actually um, is the most recent up-to-date one. It's got a splat in the middle of it for that one which is I think meant to be the source from the spaghetti worms that Mrs Twit gives Mr Twit um, and there's also that cheeky frog in there which we know Mrs Twit doesn't like from our drawing at the start of the week. These are the covers of the Big Friendly Giant, the BFG. So we've got him actually, he looks quite, this one is quite similar throughout. Um, Sophie's always in there and she's always in the BFG's hand, which is nice. In the last one though, the most recent up to date one, she's actually holding a jar of dreams, which is nice. And they seem to be leaking out, which is what's giving it that smoke effect behind the um, author name and the letters, which is nice. Um, in the middle one, there's another character on there. But apart from that, it is quite similar. Um, always shown the BFG's face and hands. 
and this one is fantastic mr fox which is one of my favorites and the first the oldest one is actually they've used quite similar colors to a fox they've used lots of oranges dark colors and he's there looking very mischievous with his um bag full of chickens and then in the middle they've used um some more characters they've used those two crooks um bogus bunts and bean i'm not sure which one's which but they've also used some background pictures, which are quite nice. When we can see them, is right in the corners, which are the children, which you can also see where, where Mr. Fox is dancing in the middle. And the most recent up-to-date one is a picture that would have happened in the story. So it's a snapshot of what happened in the story, which is where Mr. Fox and his little fox went to go and grab some chickens from the farm. Okay, so... These are the things that we're going to need to include for our front cover. Um, you're going to need to write the author's name, the book title and the illustrator's name. And they're usually written in three different fonts that look very different to one another. And the writing is not the same size. So I've sort of done an example there for you. I've written Roald Dahl in round bubble writing. OK, and it's all written in capital letters in that time. And that's my one in white writing. Then I've done the twits again in capital letters. And that's my main title. And I've done that in big block capitals. It looks really different from the Roald Dahl, which is quite round. Um, and then I've done in italic writing, I've done illustrated by Quentin Blake. And they're all different colours and they all do stand up because they're all completely different to one another. And we can see that on the actual book cover as well. Um, They've used different fonts and lots of lovely pictures illustrated by Quentin Blake. So um, you guys are now gonna just have a go on your whiteboard having a practice of drawing different styles, okay, of writing to help you to make your book cover stand out as much as possible. So it says here, try some bubble writing, italic writing. That's when you write on the slant, where, which, which, which is the font that's there for illustrated by Quentin Blake. Um, you could do the block capitals like I did for the twits. Some letters being capital and some lowercase. Spiky lettering, the choice is yours. Let's just quickly flip back and have a look through. So we've got all of those different styles there just for one book. OK, they've done some big letters, some small letters, some spiky letters, some big block capital letters, different sizes. OK, same for the BFG. And same again, really, for the twits. Lots of spiky letters on the twits because they're very spiky people with their spiky hair. Now, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, the one in the middle, they've used actually some nice italic writing slightly, um, which is quite which is quite nice. I like the look of that one, actually. And then Matilda, again, they've used two sets of that italic writing. I wonder if anyone will be able to do that one today. So on your whiteboard, I want you to have a practice at writing some different fonts. Um, so the things you need to write are Roald Dahl in one, in one way. Then you need to write the twits in a different way. Okay, so for example, you might do Roald Dahl in your best bubble writing. And then you might do the twits in some spiky lettering before then writing illustrated by Quentin Blake in maybe block capitals. Okay, so have a go at writing those things. You just need to copy from the whiteboard, but you need to make sure that you're doing it in a different way for each set of words. Okay, right. Pause me here and off you go. Right, I hope you had fun doing that. Um, there's actually lots of important characters that have been designed by Quentin Blake for each story. And we might want to include them on our front covers today. So in this one, this one's for Matilda. Okay. And in the top corner, we've got Matilda's family. There's Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood, her brother and Matilda there. They're watching the TV. They love to watch the TV. Then up in the other corner, we've got Mrs. Trunchbull, who is Matilda's enemy, and she is a very mean lady, which is why Quentin Blake's drawn her looking very mean. And then underneath, there's Matilda and there's Miss Honey there as well. And they're the main characters. So normally on the front cover, you draw the main characters. So there's lots of main characters in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. OK, there's obviously all the people that go to the factory with Charlie. Okay, we've got Veruca Salt, we've got Augustus Gloop, we've got Mike TV, there's Veruca, sorry, there's Violet Beauregard there as well, and they all go to the factory. We've also, of course, got grandparents that are in the bed, Grandpa Joe goes with Charlie, then there's Willy Wonka who we're going to need to draw, you might want to draw the Oompa Loompas on the front cover, it's completely up to you. 
Okay, and we're trying to do it in that Quentin Blake style using those jagged lines. Okay, that spiky hair, the long legs, that sort of thing. Uh, my two main characters of George's Marvelous Medicine is obviously George and then Grandma Cranky, who is the lady. She is a very mean grandma, which is why she looks mean, actually. She's got that big nose. She's got that spiky hair. She's She's got very, very thin and long limbs. Okay. Um, she is very mean, which is why Gra um, George gives her that marvellous medicine to make her better. So they're the two main characters that you might want to draw if you're doing George's Marvellous Medicine. So... We've had a quick look at who we might want to draw and the different font we might want to use. But this is a checklist of all the things that we need to include. OK, so we need to write the title of the book. That's the most important thing. And I'd maybe do that in the middle of your piece of paper. Then you need to write the author's name, which is Roald Dahl. Then you need to write the illustrator's name and it needs to be written in a certain way. It needs to be written saying illustrated by Quentin Blake. Then you can include some pictures of the main characters, use different colours to make it look as fancy as possible and some different fonts as well. So remember we practised those earlier. So when you're writing those three important things, try and use three different fonts to make it stand out. And you could also include a picture of something that happens in the book. OK, so maybe pause the screen here and just double check that we've got everything we need. OK, well, let's use our imagination to say, but we need to try and draw in that Quentin Blake style again. So remember, jagged, rough lines, drawings that look like they've been done quickly, but they haven't been. He always starts with the face, usually the nose, not too much detail on the face, spiky lines being used for hair and long, thin arms and legs. Uh, I'm going to talk to you now about the different chilies. So if you're doing a one chili art lesson, um, it, it'll be good if you did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as your front cover because I think everyone knows that one the best okay so if you're doing a one chili challenge you need to do Charlie in the chocolate factory for me today if you're doing a two chili challenge I haven't got a three chili today I just want you to do any roll doll book that you know really well and that you love reading you really enjoy it okay um so you're probably gonna need to pause me here to go and get your piece of paper and pencil lovely stuff okay right don't forget the checklist then but now you're on your way for drawing your front cover okay so remember it needs to have the title of the book it needs to have roll doll written on there somewhere you need to write illustrated by quentin blake and then you're going to start your actual illustration you're going to draw in that quentin blake style and you're going to draw main characters use some different fonts for me and make it look beautiful okay so don't forget that checklist and i hope you enjoy making your um front cover for the new roll doll book so pause me here and off you go Right, well, that's our son, actually. So well done, everybody. Um, I've loved having art with you this week, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. So have a lovely weekend, and I will see you again next week. Bye, everyone.